Okay. Okay, great. Um, so as usual, we can go to this week's project um, challenge. So who would be willing to tell us what is going on or what is expected in this week? And any questions or any descriptions or what they understood? And if I hear more from people who normally don't speak, that would be great. Abraham. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today's, uh, this week's challenge is about casual inference. Uh, they will uh, go through the document a little bit. Uh, we are given a data and it's in a table format. Yes. It's for a Nigerian based startup. And we have this data in a tabular format. We'll do some EDA tasks. And then we'll do something uh, that does that tabular data formats can't answer, which is like, what if this thing happens or what if we increase our drivers? And I guess uh, uh, inference is where it comes. So inference, uh, casual inference. And uh, I'm, I'm searching about the, what casual inference is and how we could apply it. But the purpose is to do some uh, experimental uh, analysis or maybe like predictive analysis. So it, is, it could be even be com uh, combined with, uh, with ML or machine learning. Uh, that's my understanding so far. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Abraham. And who else can add their understanding? Like, surprise yourself, especially those who don't normally speak. Johannes? So, uh, in short, the aim of the project is uh, to figure out why some deliveries request go unfulfilled, or like to find the best spot for driver to wait so that most delivery can be completed. So I understand that we have to do some EDA and to find the most common spot. But what I didn't understand is, first of all, what is what exactly is casual graph? And there is a section where it said train the model. We have to train a, a male model. Uh, what is expected of the model? Like uh, at those, like we have to have analysis to understand the best part or the most common spot. What is a model uh, predicting? I don't understand about that. Yeah, very good question. And really, thank you. So, yeah, it's, but you know, it's almost always everyone assumes what does that even the first thing mean? Like, find the place where most, you know, that they can be located such that they get more, com more orders will complete. How do we know? In the first place, that's that will solve the problem. So just maybe let's have it as a dialogue for me, on this, just so that people can understand, so that um, I can continue on that. So what? Why do you think that will solve the problem? For example, I thought like uh, using the past data we have, uh, we can have uh, a good understanding of the best spot. Exactly, uh, but what what does it tell you? Like, so if you find now best spots, what is statistically it means? Like, what does it mean between that spot and completely? What happens? So I'm guessing. Uh, I mean, the relationship. So, what do you think that the relationship is? Is it correlation? Is it you know? Yeah, so you like if, yeah. If we know the best spot to wait for the drivers, I think more delivery will be completed. So that's correlation, right? Correlation between more delivery and some spots. But how do you know yes. that's the only thing that's affected? What, if, what about if it was the rain? You know, if, if it was just yeah. actually not in the rain time, those spots are actually not that useful. How do you know 
that the relationship between uh, that that spot and more delivery or those spot. So normally, in almost every case, relations just tells you. Like for example, you know, if you search for eggs that are broken in the year and the number of people died in a year are correlated. Does it mean anything? So in a way, a lot of the issue is just that correlations doesn't mean causation. Causation means, for example, that those spots may not, may not be responsible, may not cause higher completion. This just somehow happens to be correlated. Okay, is that, does it uh, making sense? Yes, yes, like, uh, for example, the time of the day may, might also have some effect, but yeah, I thought the analysis will be enough. Yeah, but how do we know? So like, for example, you know, this, this one, you can, can also just post it in the part. So th there are many websites that shows that computes many things in time series. So for example, it's this one. Um, I am gonna share just so that uh, the window would be better. So this is, for example, just some spur. It's called spurious correlations. You know, some finding some really, you know, the Big Bang theory. You know, people who watch the Big Bang theory and and the Google searches for how to make baby are highly correlated. For example, and does that mean people are, who are watching the Big Bang theory are also searching how to make baby? um maybe like maybe more interesting would be the distance between saturn and the sun is correlates with biomass power generated in india you know as you can see very much so if you now by just looking at the saturn and the, the sun distance in time you'd be able to basically estimate you know so you, you got my point, right? Yes, yes, yeah. So these types of correlations doesn't mean um, doesn't mean anything per se. Like correlations, of course, when we have support in theory, they mean something. But you know, correlations themselves don't. And normally, the causal theory that means going beyond that would assume some form of causal inference. So that means you are not trying to only say like, let me find like the usual analysis that says, let me find where the, you know, these motorbikes stop. And then, you know, that's one order that if you can do one, that's great. But the next order of that would be, can I also refer and look at many variables, how they relate each other and infer the causal graph that means what causes what and, and in in this causal theory that basically allows you to compute not only just using the past formalism you know like but also you know by it involves like your understanding so this model building the causal graph the causal graph is basically you have your own expert opinion plus the data opinion the expert opinion says, for example, okay, you know, like uh, the company Gokada closes at um, some time, let's imagine at uh, midnight. So any data after midnight is not relevant. You know, that's that's really information that you have. You probably, you know, it may be is reflected in the data, but it may not be. You know, so things like that you can add. Or also like you might say like, you know, uh, you may have customer satisfaction data and based on that you have seen it and you can add for example this like a, a customer that is actually really faster um usually have a customer satisfaction or like a client or a, a, a motorbike that is closer 
and delivers faster actually makes you know like customers order more which means that there's a lot more completion because they don't abandon the i don't know they, they don't change position things like that you cannot that's called expert opinion so the causal graph is trying to build this thing from the data first you build it in a certain way either um, manually using experts and then from that you measure some form of correlations but in this case it's Bayesian inference and and that way you will be able to know um, like you'll be able to compute at least and then from that you can do a lot of just like any other model you can do predictions and your predictions would be causal you know based on causal inference does that I mean of course you don't have to understand everything now but does that make sense does that answer your question so uh, like is the model predicting the best spot or like assigning a I think that's one part i mean just for, forget that one i think you, your mind maybe is just fixed on that there's a lot more it can do right it's not that that one is not the only thing that as, I, as we say that one that's just one parameter right so it does predict maybe it can tell you that but also more what about if i increase you know if i ask my drivers to drive one kilometer around you know how is my completion rate increases you see like that's much more than that so it's it, it you can you can do a lot of experiment on your hypothesis so normally there is no such thing as point estimate and in every theory there is no such thing as called the best spot there are like uncertainties on that so you can actually do on that uncertainty so that means you can ask many questions say like you know how uncertain is it how can i distribute by you know them driving around for example every second or every whatever within a one kilometer around this area you know how how will be my my completion rate increase so you can do a lot more than just a best spot so that one is first order estimate right that's called the mean of a distribution again i am talking some statistical sense because it's for a lot more what you have got used to is maybe simplified like you want the best spots and that's it but there's no such thing in the world in the real world like in real actually world what happens is that there are only you know some some places and uncertainties around them okay does that is that confusing more or is that helping yeah uh, yeah it's helping it's a bit confusing it's helping that's good okay so then others so you have contributed your part that's great i hope others would ask and then this thing gets clearer okay uh henok okay uh so does the data have to be live like how, how would we check whether the new uh that's that's called formalism the causal graph has formalism and it, it is like think of it it is the causal graph is trying to form first without at all thinking what causes what you know or how much it causes how much it causes is a data part but the graph part is what parameter for example does rain does rain cause more delivery order or more delivery order causes rain which one do you think is the case the first one uh, rain causes exactly. more delivery order. do you think it is possible that more order causes rain no exactly so that that part is called the graph so that means in this case the graph will be drawn that more not from rain to like you know uh so the causation will not be more ordered a parameter called order increased or more order order number of order so number of orders will be will not be correlated or as a cause as a causal relation to rain but the other way around the arrow will be it's called you know graph means uh, a cyclic graph it's normally means one goes from one point to another so that means in this case rain to 
like number of orders see so you first build that one you're not even measuring how much of is this correlation or this causation that one becomes the data part because that one is what you are inferring from the data but the causal graph is something your knowledge plus also of course from data you can construct something if you don't know for example rain and number of order is very easy but you don't know for example certain geolocation let's imagine by district certain districts and number of orders you have no way of what causes what in that case data can help you understand is does that make sense okay great yeah you can go on if it's another question uh yeah so uh, you said uh, we don't know in the beginning you said we don't know whether uh, the co whether the correlation is caused by causation like uh, the big bang theory had the yeah. example you, you gave us so how, how do we check that one so you, do, you don't have to i mean the formalism again so the formalism is a statistical formalism that is that handles that once you build the ca causal graph then the formalism it's a mathematics and statistics that it handles that for you so that's just like you you, you would have as long as the graph is correct then that's fine right so it's the the causal inference is a formalism it's just another type of formalism let's say ml it's just part of ml but in this case causal graph it's a vision statistical uh, part so that means it will not i mean you see as as er, earlier for example there's just a simple correlation between the big bang you know the viewing big bang theory and um, searching for how to make baby you know just all you have is just one it was all you had was one number correlation but it, you didn't have other parameters called the cofactors or you know hidden variables but in the in the in this causal inference you have to assume your you know it will give you you have to put all parameters not just two and then you have to relate you have to do some causation what causes what and then from that the graph itself or the formalism would compute if there is connection to that and you know, it's a it's a in itself it's a full formalism so it will take care of that there are challenges in it as well for example if you don't have the full parameters that becomes also a problem so for example if you don't have a rain data but you have now a data that's called um i don't know some order number of orders and locations but imagine that location has nothing got to do with it people will just be when it rains they order more imagine that's the only correlation but if you didn't have the rain data collected in your data now even if with the causal one you have no way of knowing what causes what but the formalism says you should be thinking and, and it gives you warning when yeah it's like things like that happen but of course it's like again if you don't specify you know if you don't specify the feature that's a problem so is that does that make sense okay yeah and abu Bakr causation seems more like prediction no i think it's a slightly it is prediction but ml doesn't deal with causation again ml is just more built on top of correlations so this one assumes more it's like distance versus displacement you know or a speed versus velocity that causation has vector that points to variable relations and how how the causal uh, you know the causal graph defines that so it has it has vectors um while any of the mls most of them are developed based on just correlation so that's different in that sense yeah there are i mean we are building one right so that when you build a, a model like a causal graph that's that's called a ml model 
And not only that, there are deep learnings that are based, even LLMs that are based, based on causal ones. Yeah, in one you get, you can do more than the other, but it takes also more computation. So it's, I'm just answering for what is the difference. So people just, yeah, it's like, it's, it's a little bit involving. So you would only do it when something matters most. Again, mostly, I mean, you should do it for everything, but when it's like the same as like fitting a linear curve versus a more complex model. You know, for many things, you would you should really just use linear fit, and that's it. You know, you regress it. But for as you get more and more interested, then it's slightly different. Okay. Any other question? Any other explanation? What? Yeah, Michael. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is my understanding. So there is a company called Gokada, and uh, it is, it, uh, we are supposed to have there is unfulfilled delivery re requested so it is asking a team of the next academy as to help solve that problem using data analysis and casual inference technique i think so uh, so first we, we have to identify the primary cause of this unfulfilled requests and develop a solution so uh, there is data but sometimes the the data couldn't be useful because we can't directly change it or explaining in a matter of like other things for example there there could be rain in that day or in that month there could be holiday or gps system even uh, for example in something somebody uh, walks in a street with 99 phone, phones so so that the google maps in that area and it creates traffic jam i read something like that so some of external factors can affect this kind of so, things so first in like for uh, in other weeks we, we just do the ide in the data pipeline and we do the machine learning something like that but in these weeks we have to do the casual uh, think because we can't directly use uh, data so this is my understanding if i am right uh, or if i'm wrong, wrong correct yeah. me i think yeah it is generally exactly okay it's like the the things that the details i mean you know for example there is task two and in the task two this is a nice visualization and i want you to attempt it as part of the, um, like like visual, telling the story in a data so that would be one of your major also if you haven't seen it so this is for example just the same data can be done there's a map and you know like this part is a, a taxi that is empty in this case your mode it can be motor and then when when it starts like then it becomes blue and then when it ends it becomes red and it goes on and goes on and it's like it won a number of awards a day in the life, um, like, you know, NYC taxi a day in the life. That's basically, I think, for one day or something. It's just visualizing the one day part of the person in New York, um, in Manhattan. So, yeah, so this, this form of like, you can see, like, you can really tell a story a lot more, you know, instead of just that same data that's telling you this, but now it's called storytelling right so in the storytelling sense this is what is what is good um and by overlaying visualizing this is just another form of eda right you can just show some someone and for this and then people would be like okay you know what about like okay maybe there's a problem because this you know there's a lot of distance that's covered empty taxi maybe can we minimize or you might say like okay you know sometimes that uh things are ending points are much more closer but the starting points are very far apart so things like that you can actually just check and and learn right so this part is task two creates a visualization like that and the the person's uh repository is shared as well so the the one that was done that one um so those are details and then in the data exploration exactly based on the time and location create 
features like that means it's called data enrichment i think that's already said um so that you would be able to add more more factors that that you can actually infer for right so is rain or holiday you know things that make sense you know this is called expert opinion right i'm i'm giving you in this case in, in this sense or the challenge of one's giving you like this element like you know what what are the usual variables that could be affected so we might not exhaust it we might need to discover it we might whatever but these are called hypotheses so these are hypotheses rain it may affect holiday may affect special occasions may affect traffic condition may affect hour of the time weekend or whatever may affect and and others you might add so this this basically some of them are enrichment given the date of or the timestamp of the the order you would be able to determine some of them you need just to refer for that date and for that location you need to pull it from apis and things like that okay okay any is it super clear what are not clear what can we what where can i help you explain more or do you have questions michael okay i was researching something in the morning so there is a concept called confounders i think so in yes. the casual and it is a variable we haven't controlled for so that yes. we can have the casual effect on the result so how can we choose the confounders yeah so it's this is exactly those are confounders right so these are basically variables that you might not that might affect but not in your data so if you ex, you know it's trying to it's trying to not yeah so if you have them then the, your modeling becomes good if you don't have them then they hide they basically they're like two things are correlated but not caused so for example as earlier as i said if you didn't have rain as your variable for example as one variable now you might assume location and number of order might be correlated but might not be it's just only the rain that is making them if you now add rain maybe then you start seeing that they, there is no actually that much correlation between them because what was correlated was rain to uh, more order and then rain to that location Does that address your question? So you'll keep one one variable the standard, then check again, something like that? No, I think it's just about not missing. Like I mean, you don't, you know, in a way, it's about thinking more whether your data is complete or not. It's a it's a data quality part. Have you thought about uh, many of the important variables or is there something missing so if you don't know about your for example let's imagine there was a movement against something let's imagine you are a gokada but so many people used to be i mean one example good example is telegram versus whatsapp so when whatsapp was changing its security if you didn't know about whatsapp change but you only modeled about you know the number of features um, or the features that telegram puts in the number of users it attracts now oh at some point you realize there was some feature that's called edit bug fix something and then suddenly like five i don't know 200 million people just joined telegram you might say like wow that bug fix was really the issue but in principle you missed one variable one co-founder that is called you know uh whatsapp changed so it's about controlling that and not trying to miss but that part is you know you can only speak as much as the data that you have as much as the theory the experts that you have you'll always miss maybe something but it's fine but you try to think about brainstorm if there are anything missing so it's a control it's not uh, you can't do much if you don't know i mean if you do the right thing then it's fine so the formalism allows you to think these are these cases happen so and it just allows you to control okay 
Anyone else? Find anyone that I haven't heard before? I mean, there are a number of people I haven't heard before. And can you please just ask or explain? And I know that this, I don't have to tell you, you should do it in your own time, but I also have to nudge you. And you know yourself, that you haven't spoken in the, usually my, my rule of thumb is that if you haven't spoken in the last, you know, three sessions, then it means that you haven't spoken. Or, or if we make it, okay, if you haven't spoken last week in total, let's just make it even that one, the rule of thumb. Like the, the past week, if you haven't spoken in any of the stand-up, then something is missing. So you, you should be forcing yourself and, you know, come back to just prepare so that you can, you can, you know, don't skip one, more than one week without speaking. So I will give you the slack today, but um, I really just want you to, to focus that. I mean, it's, it's important at this week. Okay. Mm. My question is in uh, the, the general uh, thing. Uh, so we are uh, we are looking for uh, best correlations to find the solution is that the whole project. Sorry again. And, uh, are we saying the the there is a problem the 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 company problem so we are trying to find the best solution by making the best correlation is that the uh, general it's not a term? best correlation it's a formalism it's where you just like whether we use let's imagine um you know deep learning machine learning or simple linear regression we're just using another mod model or formalism called causal inference because we think like your boss in this case think of it like the your boss thought about it, the senior lead thought about it, and the person thought, you know, maybe this for this case, um, using uh, causal inference is good. So you are doing that in that sense. So yes, it addresses it because I mean the only usually that the senior person what they are considering is to choose an algorithm is mostly the type of questions they want to ask, you know. Are they just wanting to predict what is the ne next number of orders? In that case, they probably will choose regression, right? Because it's a time series data and they would just use regression. Like then they would just say like, okay, you know, some form of regression. And if they want to identify features, locations for just some form of, you know, EDA plus uh, some some machine learning that would just predict uh, its future. So normally the EDA just gives you the descriptive part, gives you the past, and then from that you also predict, you know, based on just based on that. Now in this case, what we want is we'll, uh, slightly beyond that. We wanted actually to, to ask questions like this: What will happen to the number of completed orders if drivers are one kilometer away from their location see these are called the what if or the would what would have happened it's it's these are questions that machine learning cannot answer easily but these are very very suitable these are type of questions are suitable for uh, causal inference so you see like this is a, actually it's not about the past it says which clients are frequently um ordered if the, uh, so this is actually more in the past but but this one is the future if i increase by 50 percent which clients could order more that's a kind of simulation right so it's this there are and uh, when i think by the end of this week you will you will know the what causal graph is and the formalism these are called blue calculus and and more so you would you would learn that the causal theory handles this and we provided you of course there are python packages now even more i think i will update there's really great other uh, you can search as well there are new latest very from facebook and others uh, that comes very um, uh, python packages for causal inference 
so you should be using also them so i think for us we gave you more um i think there is one and the for example uh, causal next for example is used to be the very good one maybe still is the best but you 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 should check if there are already something good and easy yeah does that address does that address your question yes yes yeah um it is abu Bakr, like anything do, domain it needs more domain expertise i mean if you have domain expertise but that's good but as a, a basic understanding of course for every machine you know every machine data scientist just has to understand the, the domain slightly just the terminologies and all that but then after that it's the tools and the methods that normally uh, generalizes so so in principle it's yeah i mean if you have a, uh, the domain knowledge you will talk to a domain expert to actually be able to uh, get more understanding right the challenge associated whatever but you don't need more than that okay anything else anything that is not clear and is it super clear Yeah, and this one. Uh, you say when we try to uh, do the graph, uh, it says uh, we use formalism, yeah? Yes, but just causal next, for example, is one formalism. Okay, what formalism is mean? What? Formalism, what is it? Ah, it's, for example, uh, deep learning is uh, one formalism for how you model things, right? So, for example, that you need an architecture uh, for deep learning. And that, that basically gives you, that defines what is the first layer, input layer, hidden layers, and output layer, and how you relate them, and the usual definition, once you architect that, the number of weights, the number of this, the number of that. Uh, and after you do that, then there are tools that helps you, for example, TensorFlow or PyTorch, that you use them, and you define those layers, I mean, you define those architectures so that, and then you will have like some, you know, parameters that also control learning rates, this, that, um, including uh, updating the weights and, you know, back propagating, computing the loss and all that. And then that is a formalism, right? So that, that gives you a full end to end. And now in causal graph, it's the same, you need, you, it is it has a, a full formalism just like um, any other statistics it is derived from a bayesian statistics and it defines it needs to have a certain step first you need to define a graph and that graph you need to relate them it's either through expert method or that so you just that uh, the causal graph is one um, and then on that causal graph there are then you use again you can write your own package but already like causal next then you give it data in a certain format and infers the weights. And now after that, the, that formalism also gives you what actually, um, what you can do. For example, in machine learning, you would be, yeah, you have a model, now that's it, you load the model and it's called, if you use scikit, dot predict, and then you predict something. Here, you have more, maybe not just more than predict, but you can do some interventions. So they are called interventions and the one, intervention is the do that means you just say you just say it's some variable for example i i like you might say all all drivers are at the perfect spot and that means the variable that you say that one and then you infer and which means that one is set it's a do calculus it means that one it knows how to do that and then it gives you the output and then you say like yeah of course if we get really a perfect match for the, our optimization, our order increase increases by a huge number. So the one that allows you to do this is called formalism. So it is like, it's a, it's a very more general, but 
it's usually that frameworks versus formalisms, the differences are just this one involves both theory and the, the product in the way that I'm using. Frameworks normally, they can just be the product only. That means just TensorFlow is a framework, um, while te deep learning is more a formalism. Again, this I am not using it in a very technical sense, just for your understanding. Does that address at this? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, Abu Bakr. Uh, okay, so uh, from my skimming the document, so it says it stays more on the location. For example, what if it is one kilometers away? or if we know uh, like 20 percent of the orders uh, i think 20 percent of the time i guess so uh, like in a in a actual business context uh, having is it enough having the knowing the or uh, predicting the uh, locations like in five kilometer radius because i think we need also to consider the time so if it is at 1 p.m yeah so, yeah. Yeah. so but you can do that this, this is what it is so the other one is where they're interested in what the type of question but actually exactly it, it is important you know all of you know the model will it it, it 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 doesn't matter what you do it just the model can do all of this once you train it you can actually say like um you know that it is raining like tell me, like so you just said rain. So that means rain rain part is not anymore dependent, like it becomes one part, and then it gives you output for that, or time, or you just said a couple of others, like time is this, that, that. So it doesn't matter. It will handle. So that's called the calculus part of it. I mean, it's, it's, it's called the calculus in a way because the graph, you are operation, you are doing some operation on the graph. And when you are doing operations, you are either setting something, usually that's called do calculus or the do operation. And otherwise you are actually um, changing some weights. And in that case, it's like a bit more complex. But I think, you know, it's a, of course, it's, it's a very deep mathematical thing. You don't have to understand everything, but just once you start getting your hands dirty, it gets easier. Was that your question? Uh, yes. Yeah, thank you. So, Wandera, can you explain what exactly is happening in task three? So, in task three, it is exactly so you split the data into training and holdout sets that is simple create a causal graph using all training data and get the insights so this is so causal next for example can help you just if you don't have anything it goes through automatically analyzes the data computes correlation and based on that correlation it would then is create graph for you it may fail because if the data is not in a good format, but it would determine a causal graph. So normally you can build also causal graph by hierarchy. That means you don't just build everything in one, but you just think you, you, you choose just like uh, in machine learning, what's called feature engineering. You basically select maybe a few and then you try to build on top of that. So here also you might just choose, you know, causal graphs that you think these are the key ones that you are confident. And then from that, that means you basically, there is a way, like when you look at causal next, you basically um, would know. So I'm just gonna. So if you just causal LML, for example, is causal ML. Uh, I don't know how there, so this is another one, for example, if we just look.
if there are examples, that's what I wanted to show. Okay. Um, so you basically just do something, you know. I think maybe just easier puzzle next because I know that. So yeah, this is, for example, how you define. Like if there are three parameters, you would basically define, this is add ages from health to absence, health to G1, right? And then you can visualize graph like that. So, and as you can see, so now health is now connected to G1. So that means it's not G1 that's connected. Health is causing G1, and health is also connected to absence, right? So in this case, and then the weight, this, are, this is called one graph, for example. And you can, have, you can imagine very complex graphs um, like that as well, just that are very much, I mean, in this case, um, many things. So like, and then you can filter them once that it does, like when you follow it, you will see, you know, just you only want correlations that are above a certain threshold and then you get this type of graph. And these are, for example, unconnected, therefore you'll always choose the connected graph. And in this case, so this would be maybe your, your like the connected part, you will take them as your, as your causal graph. And then on top of that, you do stuff. So it gives you example, as I said, so this is now your connected graph, and and then on top of that, then you do some form of uh, this, you discretize data, and you you know you count the you know basically the numerical features or and and all of them you split, and then you do some form of inference on that, and. Yeah, you just have ROC and AUC just the same as any other model. And then there are things called do calculus. That means you can actually operate do intervention on higher yes is one and no zero. So that means you, you now say if higher almost always if I have now like a good higher, just uh, which is called yes to no, what happens? And then you get a distribution uh, before do and after do. And you will you will understand. So very many examples are there. So, so and there are, so that's one. So you do all of that. So, and then you, you compute the, after the causal graph, just the what I showed, the comparison can be done using, like, for example, between two causal graphs uh, that are started, you can say, like, because it needs to be stable, you can use some jacquard similarity um, and others metrics to, to measure if, for example, the graph is stable, because as you generate, if you are generating, if you are not doing it by hand, they're generating, you know, because of main correlation computation, they might be uh, not stable. So you, you wanna get a stable graph. And then after that, after reaching a stable causal graph, select only variables that point directly to the target variable. Your target variable, in this case, could be number of orders. So, and then you answer some questions based on that. So these are what, you, you know, as a starter, if nothing, you'd be able to do some interventions. And then uh, for another way to compare that one is you can com you can train just a simple XGBoost or random forest um, and and you then how much each of the model over overfit the whole dot set. So you can compare now a normal, uh, machine learning with the causal graph and that would be just concluding that one task four you may not have time especially if you are spending also some time on uh, task task two on creative visualization so you can ignore it but i want you just to understand it at least and uh, refer some of this read on logistic optimization um, 
and some of them i think will just be directly related like bike sharing demand for example on that okay yeah does that address one letter okay good anyone else i think take what i am saying serious especially those who are not speaking and if you i mean it is a dilemma for me i would want to nudge so that i would ask everyone just by name i would call and ex so that from next week i will start that one but at the, at, at the same time also i would think that you should just be really pressing like you should just be I'm prepared and press if you haven't spoken last week. And I would be very much um, yeah, doing, encouraging you to do that. Michael. Okay, in the data exploration part, I think we should do the, we should uh, gather information like public domain, like rain versus no rain, holiday yeah. or space allocation. So in the data set, there are only three uh, columns, like three origin, three destination. So do we add the, the, that, that findings in this data and compare yeah. it in the task in reach, or? In reach then, it's called in reach then. So you, you, your first part in, and most of the time, you in reach the data. You know, you expand the data with more columns because the latitude and longitude gives you the, the location. So from certain APIs, for example, rain APIs, you can get some for that time. And then the created ad and updated ad also gives you the time so you could just enrich that data. So even if it's seven columns, you can really give them, make them a lot, let's say 20 if you want, by adding many things, including, you know, holiday, is it is, is holiday or not? Or, you know, is holiday true or false, zero or one, or, you know, it's rain amount, sunny or not, you know, you know, season. You, you can add many things that you think is relevant so i've added certain things that we could add but you could also be thinking like yeah to add more for example traffic conditions maybe you could just be given that long to latitude there might be apis that you can use to do that yeah does that address michael Yes, so after that, we, we can do the task three part. Completely. Exactly, yes. Okay. Even while you do that, you can do EDA, right? While you, after enriching, you can do more EDA as well. Just just get the, the understanding. The EDA part almost always is to, to feel it and understand it so that you can have a, a dedicated expectation or a reasonable expectation even before you do anything. So, yeah. Okay. Anything else? So as always, just on Wednesday, we can have another Q&A and I would assume people would read and have more questions then. And especially those people who haven't asked it, you are just benefiting from people who are asking, that's not good. And pressure yourself, you know, make, make put the best effort you can to start contributing and helping others as well. Because your question, however, you think you are, it's just not good, it will really help a lot of people. So don't hold it out. And thanks guys. So Tenakarami team, we can stop the presentation.